Yeah. Welcome. This is the info meeting, the 29th of September. It is a beautiful day to be here. Thanks. Um, agenda topic. So change in Docker terms of service, JFrog Artifactory, release status reports, Jira upgrade plan, Oracle Cloud, Azure costs, any other topics that need to go on the agenda. Okay, then let's go ahead. Oh, and Alex. Great. All right. So by way of schedules, Olivier will be back in the office uh, two days from now. Very grateful. Uh, and uh, Oleg's limited availability continues uh, probably throughout October is my guess. Uh, Tim won't be back until next week. And new topic or same topic, change in Docker terms of service effective November of 2020. Any insights there, Alex, on? I, I haven't seen any updates. Um, I know that GitHub is now has a, um, you don't have to authenticate um, for um, Docker, like an image repository, but I, I haven't looked at it enough to know whether it's it would be a good replacement or not, or if there are any catch, catches or gotchas. But I have that, tested the GitHub and it actually is really, really nice, especially when you incorporate actions with it. Like really, really nice. Okay. Do, do they have any, do you, do you know if they have any sort of limitations? Uh, is it, because I mean, rate limiting, that sort of thing, because that's one of our biggest concerns, I think, with the Docker Hub stuff is just, you know, I think they said it's 600 poles or something like that per hour or so, some number. I don't remember the exact details, but I'm yeah. just wondering if they have any similar rate limiting on GitHub. I think the rate limiting that they have is similar to what their API rate limiting is, and that's like, three or 5,000 calls an hour, if I recall reading the documentation correctly. Okay, so, okay, so I, I, think that's, the... I think we've kind of, sorry, go ahead, Mark. No, no, after you. As I was say, I think we're just kind of in a waiting game on this to see how the changes affect things. And um, I, I guess having some mitigation possibilities like GitHub and stuff like that is something to look at, but I, I, I think our kind of stance has been kind of wait and see <laughs> if if it affects it, you know, how adversely it affects us, I guess would be the, and that's just kind of what I've seen like Tim and everyone kind of talk about, so. Yeah, I, I, I'm worried by this one. I'm very worried by it, but my actions do not support my being worried, right? Because I've done nothing to investigate it. Uh, I'm hoping with Olivier's return, we can do more investigation here. This to me feels like a, a big risk. It's not as big a risk as the next topic on the agenda, but it's still a big risk. Okay, so I does, think... does the uh, does the Linux Foundation have any with Docker Hub like uh, that we can um, you know get get underneath the umbrella since we're with the Linux Foundation with the CDF or uh, I can check on that. I'll I'll take an action item to check on that. I want to say no, but that's just more of a guess. The non-fiber gods are blessing us right now. Yeah, sorry, Alex, we're having difficulty hearing you. Okay, I fear we may have lost Alex. I propose let's go forward, Marky, address the other topics, and and then as as if Alex comes back, we can go back to the doctor topic. 
plus one. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes we, we can, can hear you. you. Alex, go ahead. Okay. Um, I forgot what my train of thought was, so <laughs> but we can move on. Sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Mark, right. should, we, should we be recording this meeting? Just, uh, I, oh, we oh, are recording. I, okay. Never mind. I, no, you're good. I, I was looking in the wrong spot. Sorry. Okay. Yes, good. Thank you. So, our, JFrog and our artifactory instance, <clears throat> the email thread is ongoing. Um, right now, the next step is I need to remind, I need to convene a meeting with me, Daniel Beck, and Baruch Sadogarski of JFrog to understand um, the sources of the costs and alternatives to reduce the costs. Um, they're talking, they, they, the way they phrase it is the costs are six figures right now for CI or for repos.jenkins. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's awe-inspiring and figuring we, we barely pay six figures in a year for our entire Azure infrastructure, so it's unfair for them to carry that much burden. Uh, and I agree with them wholeheartedly. It is unfair. We've got to find a way to carry that or reduce it. Have we done any investigation into uh, ways we could re reduce some of those artifacts? My guess is, is we just have old artifacts that aren't getting cleaned out. Well, so the, the challenge right now for us is before we, before we attempt to reduce anything, we want to understand what are the sources of the costs is it bandwidth or is it storage space? And depending on which of those it is, will guide us to choose the most beneficial thing to reduce or to, to, to change. If it's bandwidth, for instance, and we could prove that an unexpected volume is coming from ci.jenkins.io and its agents, we could probably cache on ci.jenkins.io. If it's storage space, we could delete old artifacts, right? So it, it just depends. We've got to have that conversation with them because it's not clear to us what the source of those costs are, just that they're they're out of bounds. We've got to find a way to help solve them. Okay. All right, so that one is my action item and, and Daniel Beck. Next topic, release status reports. So this one we've got, we just released 2.259 today. Uh, the release build process was successful. Thanks to uh, Olivier's marvel marvelous work on Infra 910. It continues to work for us and do just great. Uh, we, we do still need the merge. Infra 910 to master and with, but that will wait a while. There are some urgent things that Olivia will be working on when he returns. So it, don't be dismayed if it's a week or two yet before that happens. However, we've got this hot one, Alex, for your topic. The Docker image is not yet available. Given your current state, is this something we ought to risk having somebody else try working on it? Or what's your, what's your sense? I, I should be able to work on it today. Um... I, I'm going to be uh, having some good internet a little bit later that I can work on this. Excellent. Thank you. Don't, don't be shy at saying, Hey, I want to hand, hand it to somebody else. That's very kind of you to work on it. But if it, it's just not going to work for you, I suspect you're the most effective at doing it since you understand best the, the structure of that, but we can ask for other help if it would, if it would be better for you. Sure. I'll, I'll definitely reach out if I need it. So. Great. Thanks. Okay. Then we've got another hot one coming uh, about a week ago. I guess it was a week and a half ago now. Um, we had an outage where the update center took itself offline because it saw that it's a, an internally used certificate that's used to sign content or to encrypt content uh, was detected that it would expire in less than 30 days. Uh, it the system is designed to say, hey, if we're within 30 days of expiry, take yourself offline so people work on it. It did that. Um, unfortunately, we, we weren't able to get the replacement certificate into place. 
So Daniel Beck applied a workaround of setting the, the code to only warn after 14 days uh, prior to expiry. That 14 days expires October 7, and Olivier will start working on it when he returns Thursday. We think we've got enough time to complete. That's four working days before October 7, but um, I, I've been poking and prodding various people to see. Any questions there on that update center certificate? All right. Next topic, the JIRA upgrade plan. So we need to get the SSL and the DNS experts from Linux Foundation and from the Jenkins project together. Uh, to talk about how we do that piece of the transition. We need to retain issues.jenkins-ci.org. Uh, and so that's, I've asked for help from Andrew Grimberg of, of Linux Foundation, and we'll hopefully have that conversation next week. Any questions on JIRA upgrade plan? All right, next, Oracle Cloud. So Oracle Cloud had started a conversation with the Jenkins Project about two or three, maybe four weeks ago uh, through Corey Quinn, of all people, and Tyler Croy. And after conversations with me and a group of their people, I've signed a confidential disclosure agreement with them, and we're going to try to work together to, they would like to, they want to highlight Jenkins on Oracle Cloud and uh, include it in their offering. So we're, we're having those discussions. So is, is one of the possible outcomes of this that we need to bundle Jenkins in a slightly different way or do we know anything about that or, or is, I, is, it, I, is there going to require work on our part I guess is and how much? I, I don't know right now the the indications are it, they may want us to do some additional things with our Docker images. Okay. Um, but the Docker images they're interested in are Docker images that were already sort of on our minds anyway. So they're already on our list anyway and on our road now. So Docker images may be of interest to them. But um, there's been no request so far, no request thus far for any specific Jenkins project work. And my assumption is if they want it done, they will bring developers to help do it. Okay, did, just, did just wondering. your question, Alex? Yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah, and I, if we had the, any idea how much work or whatever. Yeah, the conversations with them did not involve what I anything I detected as oh this will be a lot of work for the Jenkins project. They may be able to help us accelerate some of our some of the things that we already have on the roadmap. Cool. And are they um, also possibly providing infrastructure that we can use? Is that part of this as well, or is is it? That's that's part of my assumption. Is what they're doing um, may include infrastructure. For instance, one of the things that they highlight is their bandwidth is cheaper than other people's bandwidth. And one of the substantial portions of our cost is in fact bandwidth in and out of Azure. Right. So we might consider hosting a mirror on Oracle Cloud, or we might consider other, other things. But right now it's still in discussion phase. Okay. Thanks for the update. Um, and then last point I had was that we are Azure costs for August were in budget. Uh, we were about $1,000 under, if I remember correctly. And we're looking about the same for September. So that's good. Uh, we don't want to exceed our budget that CDF has allocated to us. Uh, we've also been assigned a customer success manager. Uh, Lena, I believe it is. Let me get the name. And she and I are in, Kayla Linville. She 
he's provided some documentation that may be able to help us. And interestingly enough, the Oracle people said, hey, if you let us look at your Azure bill, we may be able to offer some recommendations on ways to reduce costs. So just so you're aware, we've got we've got that person available now. I've not used her extensively yet, but she's offered some hints and suggestions. Any other topics we need to discuss today? Nothing for me. Okay. I think we can call this meeting done then. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Marky. Hey, Alex, Mark. Have a great day. We'll see you, you guys too. online. Thanks, Alex. All right.